Hello, thank you so much. Excellent, yeah, this is great. Yeah, this is perfect. I actually thought I was, I'm giving another talk tomorrow, so they just swapped the different talks. So today we're gonna talk about FIO, which is awesome. Hello all, thanks for coming. So there's two major problems that I see in the cryptocurrency space, and I've been in this space for almost seven years now. One, key management, and two, it's just like too hard to use. The user experience is really, really frustrating. So I wanna talk a little bit about, because um, we were gonna do the EOSIO fork track, that was kind of what this is about. What we're gonna talk about today is an EOSIO fork. It's a different technology, just like uh, Link's chain we heard about earlier. So this is the foundation for inter-wallet operability. We wanna revolutionize blockchain usability. As you can see here, we have a lot of members and affiliates that are already on board with this. It's basically a layer that's gonna sit inside of your wallet to make using cryptocurrency easier. So it's a pretty long presentation. We're gonna go through it pretty quick. I'm not gonna read all the cool quotes from all the cool people that think we're awesome, but you can read those later, that's fine. To, to achieve this, we really have to make this so much easier. We're not gonna ever get mass adoption in this space with the way things are now. Big uh, public addresses, you know, dealing with the confusion of, you know, is that the right address? Was there a man in the middle attack? How can I know that I'm actually interacting with the person I expect to interact with? It's very, very confusing. And we, we did some surveys here with about 200 different crypto users, and we talked about a lot of them, you know, they're, they're just not confident. It's a very stressful process. And how many people here have traded and used Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, any of this? Was it a comfortable experience for you? No. Like, everybody put their hands down immediately. Like, I, it's always stressful every time. And this, this, this was proven out by the people we talked to. You know, they had problems. Some people even were victims of man in the middle attack. And what that means is you get a QR code or you get a Bitcoin address and you think it's the right address. You send the money and they're like, hey, uh, are you going to send me that money? And, and like, yeah, no, I did. And no, 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 I never got it. And then you find out you sent it to the wrong address. Somebody actually swapped that out. In, in public private key encryption systems, that's a key exchange when you hand someone your public address. It's a very serious thing. And our current models don't handle that at all, very well at all. So we're trying to fix that with FIO. So the solution, again, we're not gonna read all the quotes. We'll, we'll jump through this. We're not building a new wallet exchange or payment processor. We're just making them more usable. You know, we don't send actual Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of these coins. We're just actually working with the wallets, the exchanges, the payment gateways to make that process easier, private, more secure, more accurate, all those things. So we're uh, completely blockchain agnostic, meaning it's gonna be, and it already is, it's, it's, our testnet is up now, built right into the wallet, right into the user interface layer. And this gives you control of it. It's fully decentralized, as I said, it's an EOSIO fork, so it's using DPoS and it's open source, at least it's going to be at, at mainnet launch. So the roadmap eventually, it basically just involves FIO addresses, FIO requests, and FIO data. And by FIO address, I mean Luke colon Stokes. That could be my address for everything, all things crypto. Doesn't matter what blockchain, doesn't matter at all. If you look in your swag bag, there's actually a, a card where you can get a free FIO address. We're one of the sponsors for the conference. And so I highly encourage you to check that out. Uh, don't bid on the Stokes domain, that's mine. I'm currently bidding on it. There's a, a domain auction going on right now, but there's also ability to, to secure your own address. So I think I have like Luke colon uh, Edge because I like that wallet and been working with that wallet. But the address, uh, if we go back just one more, the, the address system makes it just super easy, so you don't have to deal with public addresses. Also, fear request. I've been in the space, like I said, for a while. Almost every single time I receive cryptocurrency, I expect it. It's not just out of the blue. So generally, requests are how we do things. We're expecting someone to send us money. Well, now we can do that right in the wallet. So I can say, hey, you know, we just had dinner. Let's split it. And I can send someone a request, and it shows up right in their wallet with some information. Oh, yeah, split dinner with Luke. He prefers to get EOS today or Ethereum or Bitcoin or whatever. And that'll show up right in your wallet. You hit the button, and it sends it right off. So I think that's really cool. In the future, we're going to have all these other really cool options. Multi-signature routing is going to be really interesting. I built an e-commerce company for 10 years, and you know, trying to get people to use cryptocurrency was very difficult. But we're going to be able to make that really easy. It's going to be built into the process with all the metadata. So your whole shopping cart would be right there in your wallet. And you're like, yep. And you know that it's going to go to the right person. So we're, again, a, a self-standing ledger, modified EOSIO code base. Uh, if you listened to Fred's talk earlier, you understand that staking and RAM and CPU and bandwidth is all really confusing for people. So we've kind of removed all of that. It's going to be fee-based, but it's going to be done in such a way where you don't actually, if you're using it for most users, you're never going to have to pay any fees. Once you get your address, you kind of have that and you have a, a bundled number of fees that go with that address. So you're just not even gonna have to worry about that kind of stuff. It's got, uh, I, I definitely encourage you to go online to check out the paper and the roadmap. I like that we actually did a white paper. <laughs> so we're actually defining the problem in a semi-academic you know, language. And then we have our own road, roadmap of how we think we're gonna implement and solve that problem. 
Uh, the alpha version, like I said, is up. The Crypto Alliance group is working on our testnet, which hopefully in the next couple of weeks is going to be open for other block producers. And by next week, should be available to any wallets or exchanges or payment gateways that want to start working with the protocol and playing around with it. Uh, I'm really excited about this because I'm really excited about a lot of things in the blockchain space. And I think that if we don't have more usability, we can build all these cool DAX and DAOs and DAPs and de you know, decentralized finances. But if they're not e easy to use, then we'll never get mass adoption. So what's the point? So that's why I think these things personally are really important. So the business model. This is one of the things you've probably heard about ENS and unstoppable domains. And there are other people in this space that are doing something like this. One of the things that I like about FIO, the Foundation for Interwallet Operability, is we recognize that the people that create all the value in this space for this particular solution are the actual wallets, exchanges, and payment gateways. So we have to incentivize them because they're creating all the value in the space. So we have a model for this that is really neat in terms of we're, you know, less customer support for them. They get to share in the actual field commerce. So the block producers, for example, are going to be the wallets, exchanges, and payment gateways. And as people hold the field tokens in their wallet, it's by default going to proxy to their block producer account. So they're gonna get that block producer rewards. They're gonna get fees on the network. They're going to, uh, you know, have, uh, initial token incentives for those who are like taking a risk with this thing before it's kind of known what the token price is and how valuable the protocol is. So those that participate in the testnet right now, we've got some block producers here today and I've been talking with you guys already about participating, you know, being, being one of those that help us get this going on the testnet. You know, my title is Chief Decentralization Officer because I'm taking this private bit of code and eventually bringing out to an open source world that is, you know, really important. I think that you know, if we're gonna do really cool things, if the company behind this DAPX goes away, is this gonna live on? Well, I'm confident to know that's a yes, no matter what, because we're starting out as a decentralized network that's open source. So the, the basic economics for this is the users pay utility fees in wallet with you know, whatever coin they're using. So they say, yeah, I wanna register my fee address. And it's similar to like registering a domain name. You know, you pay your annual fee and people are pretty used to that. And there, from there, the Fiat Foundation can convert that. And these numbers are still kind of being decided, 10% distributed to the wallet, 2% to the foundation, which is also gonna run as a DAO. And then I think we're actually talking about changing that up a little bit to instead of just rewarding the block producers, we're also very interested in potentially, and again, a lot of this is still being discussed, is rewarding the main chains. So there's a lot of blockchains out there that know they need to improve usability, but they don't, they don't have a path for that, or it's gonna take two years of their roadmap. They know that they're you know, using public addresses are really confusing and really hard. And if they realize, oh, we can just move that over to the FIO protocol and we don't have to build that anymore. And as long as we're on a wallet that supports the FIO protocol, we get all that usability for free. So we're talking about potentially rewarding some of the chains that wanna support the FIO protocol publicly and talk about it. Because that would, again, increase the network effect, increase the value for all of us. And then we have um, this idea that you can uh, restrain from for staking and then also uh, the foundation, as I said, is gonna be run as a decentralized autonomous organization itself, which can participate as kind of a central point of communication for the whole different group of field block producers. So again, as I said, the wallets are the primary block producers and then get ongoing residual income. And through the, if you're familiar with EOS, you're familiar with delegated proof of stake, through this system, those who have the most stake in this system will actually also have the most say in how it's governed, how the protocol evolves, how things change over time. And I think that's personally really important because I, I can remember the drama in the Bitcoin world with, between Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin Cash, the frustration about like, how are we gonna come to consensus? How are we gonna make decisions on this stuff? And, and so I personally like delegated proof of stake because it enables us to do that based on our stake in the system. And so we're gonna go on just a little bit further. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Dapix. Uh, go ahead. So Dapix is the company, that it's a normal corporation that's been funded to support and launch this protocol. We're privately funded. The mainnet launch will be completely open source and the tokens will be, a lot of the tokens will be given to the foundation so that they can actually distribute them according to those who are adding value. So you have kind of these agreements with the wallets, exchanges, block producers, they're gonna add the value coming in the future. And Important for me is that this is gonna be open source, gonna be completely owned and operated by the community, which is like what this is all about, right? The first question is to be why blockchain? Well, why blockchain is because we wanna be able to have this going on and not have to trust any single point of failure. And then of course the foundation, uh, I'll get into this a little bit, but it's essentially going to be, as I said earlier, this point of communication for the field protocol. 
so that you know when people want to say, I want to integrate this, who do I talk to? You're going to have 21 different block producers. It might be kind of confusing to get some understanding on that. So we're going to help with that to have a central point of communication. We're actually currently looking for an executive director. Uh, that may be me, that may not be. We're still kind of figuring all that out. So if you're interested in this protocol and you want to know more about the foundation, please come definitely see myself or Pavo or David Gold that's in the back there, our CEO. You can wave over there and say hello, David and Pavo. And uh, we'd definitely love to talk to you more about that. Again, these are our partners and affiliate members. Uh, we've got some great investors as well and our board that are kind of helping us. They see the vision for this. They understand that no matter how many cool things we build on blockchain, if we don't get mass adoption, it doesn't matter. No one's going to use it. We have to focus on usability. We have to make it easier. And for me, this is one of the only protocols I've seen that's going to span all the crypto tribalism. When you have a, a solution that, that Bitcoin people and Bitcoin Cash people can go both get behind and get excited about, that's pretty interesting. So to me, I think this is a, a great opportunity for us as a community to start doing things in a very professional way. Because you don't think about SMTP or HTTP or these different protocols. The internet are, was around for 10 years and people didn't use it until HTTP came out web browsers, World Wide Web, these kind of things were made available because of improvements in usability. So I think that's about it. Um, yeah, also we just did a survey and talked to a bunch of people. Uh, you can read through the notes here. And this stuff is available online at fio.foundation as well, where people are just you know, very frustrated and they want this. They're willing to pay for it. They think this is important. Uh, go forward. And uh, yeah, we can, you know, I'm running out of time, so I'm not gonna jump through all of this. And this is our roadmap. Basically, we're getting close to launching live. Our goal is to land Q1 2020, possibly even January 2020 to get the main net up and running because we know we have a lot of competition out there. But we think this is important. We think it has to happen. So if you want to find out more, you can check out the white paper at FIO Foundation slash white paper or the roadmap, FIO.Foundation at the roadmap. And then if you want to see a demo, definitely check out the demo video if you can. It's really neat to actually see it and see the request show up in someone's wallet and say, wow, this is so easy. This is the way cryptocurrency should be. And again, my name is Luke. You can contact me. That's my email address. I'm on Telegram and Twitter. If you want to know more about FIO, I'll be around here today and tomorrow as well. Would definitely love to talk to you about it. I've been in the space for a while, and I think this is a solution we need for mass adoption. So thank you so much.